Welcome back to the channel guys, my name's Andy R and this is the Brotherhood of Men, a channel solely dedicated to getting you men out there a better outcome in your lives. And I do that by giving you information, by sharing my opinion, sometimes sharing news stories, but giving you facts and statistics that you can use so that you can be both armoured and armed. Anyway, today is actually that follow-up video that I said I was going to do to the Taking Back the Nice Guy. And in that video, I said I was going to do this one, and it's going to go more into depth of the, the other half of that story. And the other half of that story is why for thousands upon thousands of years, pretty much all of organised human civilization, our ancestors made sure that men and women at a young age got married, got paired up, got settled down, and why they did that. And the reason they did it is going to blow your mind. So buckle in, this is going to be a bumpy ride, and you're probably going to hear a few things that you go, oh yeah, and I never realised that, and oh my god, it's so clear now. So watch this video all the way through to the end, because you will get some great information. Well, I think you will, because I'm the one giving it, so I'm a little bit biased. So, why did all of our ancestors, why is it only in probably the last hundred years, maybe a smidge longer than that, that all the rule books been torn up and we've decided that, hey, let the chips fall where they may, let's try something different than other than what has worked all the way throughout human history up to this point. You see, men and women got together and they had children. And they realised very early on that they needed to get those children, the boys and the girls, together in a settled, stable relationship. It was the best thing that worked. And they needed to do that early. Now, when I say early, when we look back in our history, boys and girls, because they were, by our standards, boys and girls, were getting married at 13, 14, 15. As we became more civilised, that became 18, 19, 20. If a woman wasn't married by her mid-twenties, she was classed a spinster. If a man wasn't married by his mid-twenties, he was called a confirmed bachelor. Something was a little off with these people. That's what the norm said. Nowadays, we see women and men not settled, not in a stable relationship, not married well into their 30s and 40s. Why has all of that changed? And why isn't it working? Maybe because our ancestors knew something had learnt the hard lesson and passed it down generation to generation before written text, before we were all literate and could all read for ourselves. It was passed down orally from grandfather to father, from father to son, from grandfather to the son, you know, missing a generation. They all, it, there's an old phrase that said, it takes a whole village to raise a child because the whole community was invested in the best outcome for those young boys and girls. It was the father's role as the provider and protector to make sure that his daughters had the best match because girls and boys went straight from their home with their parents into marriage. There was no gap in between. Straight from one to the other. The women in that, they went from the tutelage of their mothers and the protection and guidance of their fathers into the protection and guidance of their husbands. But the tutelage of their mothers was what made them desirable to the men because the fathers and mothers wanted the best match for both their daughters and for their sons. When it came to the sons, they wanted a wife for their sons. So, in this situation, what was happening was the, the daughters were already wives. Not they were married, they were already wives. They'd been trained and tutored by their mothers in the duties of a wife. And it was a complex duty. They learned it from when they were at their mother's knee. They saw it every day, they saw how a mother behaves, and they were taught the skills they needed to be a wife. And those skills were 
to be able to cook, to provide for their husband, to be able to mend things, to be able to clean, to, to be able to um, support, to be able to run a household, to run a home. And that meant budgeting, that meant make sure that the money went far enough to pay the bills, to buy the food, to buy the clothes for the children that may come along in that marriage, and their husband and themselves, to make sure that when something broke they could either fix it or get their man to fix it, to make things last, to run a home. They were in charge of the home, quite literally, that was their domain. The man was the head of the household, but he went out and faced the world every day. He felt, faced the trials and tribulations of the world out there, so he could quite literally bring home the bacon, bring home the cash, bring home the food, and he gave it to his wife to distribute the best she knew how, because she was already a wife. When it was time for the family of the man to go looking for a wife, this wasn't a job in process their wife was already fully formed, ready to go. I'll use this analogy. If you went furniture shopping and you went to a, a, a good furniture, you, you want to get yourself, I don't know, a new TV stand, for instance. You go to a shop, you see the TV stand you want, you pay the money, that comes in a van to your house, you take that out, put it straight into your home and plonk your TV on, it's ready to go. That was what a wife was when you got married in generations past. Ready to go, already formed as a wife, ready with the skills and the knowledge to be that partner, to not partner, sorry, marriage is never a partnership, to be a wife. She was fully formed as a wife. She was trained in wifely duties. Just like that TV cabinet, it was ready to go. What you're getting now is IKEA flat pack. Some assembly necessary. No instruction manual, or the instruction manual is gobbledygook. It, it barely resembles anything. And when you put it together, you found out that you've got a wardrobe, not a TV stand. But of course, years, using this analogy, years have gone down the line now, and you're having to put up with a wardrobe and not a TV stand. You see, they're no longer wife material. This is what a modern woman is. And it's only happened in very recent history, like I say, the last 80 to 100 years, maybe a smidge over that, that the rule book's been turned out. It's been tore up and said, oh, let's try something different. Not what's lasted, what's worked throughout all of human history. And this is the reason that our ancestors did this. Because men and women left alone will not want to be together. Okay, let me explain that a little bit. That probably, <laughs> you probably didn't put that very well. Uh, let, let me start with one side of it, the man's side. He, as a man, doesn't anymore go straight from this family home into a marriage at a young age. He now has time out in the world himself. After education, he goes, probably finds his own place to live and gets a job in corporate or gets a job as a manual labourer or gets a job doing any number of jobs that men do. Some of them dangerous, some of them not. Whilst he's got that time to himself, he's exploring his environment. He's conquering women left, right and centre. He's realising he doesn't have to be married to get his needs met. He's realising that he's self-sufficient. He realises that he can cook for himself, he can clean for himself, he can budget for himself, work his own finances out for himself, he can make a home for himself, completely devoid of a woman. He can be solely independent. And he realises that this isn't bad. This is great. So he starts rejecting a relationship. So long as he's getting his ashes old every now and then, he's fine. He'll have hook ups, he'll have bangs and this, that and the other. Great, no problem. You see, he was left alone. He didn't go from the home to the marriage. Just like our ancestors realised that was the best thing, to keep the species going, keeping the community together. But we no longer have communities, do we? We have individuals. We're all in pods now. Now, for the woman's side, she lives in her emotions. 
The, the father knows this about his daughter. The mother knows that's about her because she's a woman herself. She knows that she needs a strong, kind, guiding hand. Not somebody who's going to abuse her and that's what she needs from a man. Somebody who's both strong, patient and guiding. A good guy, a nice guy, just like in the other video about emulating what you see and ending up a good, nice guy. But she's had time on her own. She leaves the home, she probably goes into a higher education, probably goes into the workforce herself. She goes and lives on her own. She realises she's having hot girl summer, she, she's bunking up with this Chad and that Chad, and each failed relationship leaves her a little more damaged, leaves her a little less suited to be a wife, to be a long-term partner, to be in a stable relationship. Until in the end, she's getting to the baby rabies time, she's getting into the danger zone, you know, late 20s, she's starting to, the rational mind started to kick in because the, emo, the uh, biological clock is ticking so loud that she needs to settle down. And all of those things that she did before weren't working. She now needs the nice guy. She now needs the good guy, the dependable, solid, my brother's out there. And she starts looking for him. But by this time, the guys have been rejected so many times or have decided that, hey, I can get hook up whenever I want. They've decided, I don't need you. And besides which, if I needed a woman like you, I can get a younger one. You're now used up. You're now old. Bodies counts behind you going into the hundreds. You have made such a chaotic mess of your life that I don't want to be there to clean up. No, thank you. If I want that, I can get younger. And statistically, the happiest relationships and marriages are between a younger woman with an older man. And I don't mean, like, you know, a man my age marrying a woman who's like 18 or 19 or something like that. I mean, it's usually, on average, an eight year gap between the man and the woman, the man being roughly eight years. That's statistically how it is and they tend to be the happiest most settled relationships between men and women by statistics so when a woman's starting to get into her 30s a man's also hitting his stride in his 30s and this is why i keep telling you guys it gets easier as you get older because whilst you're hitting your stride you are massively attractive to those you younger women who see that you are the prize you're a catch you're exactly what they want. This is why you see so many younger women actually dating men that are a bit older than themselves by 8, 10, 12 years. My own situation, to put this in context, is my woman's 11 years younger than me. I can honestly say, and I've said this many times in jest with my friends, ah, you're only as old as the woman you feel. So I'm 11 years younger <laughs> than I appear. I'm 57. Well, you know, I'm not really. I'm 11 years younger than that. I'm 46 <laughs> because that's the woman I feel. But what I'm saying is that's the norm. What The relationship I'm in is the norm because the younger, the men age like fine wine. Men age like fine wine or a fine burgundy. But women age like milk. You go off. And the more chaotic, the older you are, the more often rancid you become. And that doesn't sound nice because I didn't want it to sound nice. I'm telling the truth. You, my brothers out there, are probably laughing to yourself and going, yep, <laughs> because it's true. And this is why our ancestors, for generations, for all of human history, when we started to settle into communities, made sure that at a young age we paired off the, the men, and the girls together so that it went straight from their home their home into marriage no gap in between so that men didn't have the freedom to realize hang on a minute i don't need to be with this woman i can i can have any woman or no woman I, i'm independent i'm strong i can i can hunt for myself i can fend for myself i can feed myself i'm strong and independent and not like Women who say, I'm a strong, independent woman. No, no, we built the city, we built civilization, and we run the infrastructure of it. When the, the world goes to chaos, we can carry on running for our own benefits. Women can't do that. They don't run the infrastructure, and I mean the big, heavy industry infrastructure that makes everything work. They don't do that. 
but they had time away they didn't have time to settle into their chaos to make bad ridiculous choices to make horrendous relationship damage to themselves that made them now not only suitable for a stable relationship but can't even recognize a stable relationship so this is why our ancestors made sure they paired us up early because it worked and it worked through all of human history and it's only now in the last hundred maybe a hundred and 20, 110 years, that all of a sudden they went, no, nah, let's tear up the rule book and see what where the chips lie. Let's, let's shred it all up and try something different. Well, how's that working out? Because I can honestly tell you that it's not working well. That tradition still works in non-Western countries and is still being used. Why do you think they still have high marriages, high birth rates, high everything? They're going to be the ones that take over with our collapsing westernised world. Feminism only works in a free society. And it's pretty much feminists who ruined it all. I'm going to do a video on that subject about how we got here, but on a different perspective, and it's all around about feminism and how they have really tore up the rule book for us. But tell me, do you agree with me? Is my logic sound? My thesis I put in front of you, my brothers, to peer review. Please tell me what you think of it. Have I got it right? Tell me in the comments. Have I got it wrong? Tell me in the comments. Is it true that men left on their own realise we don't need women and therefore we are independent? We can do all of those things for ourselves that a wife did. Do, are women no longer wife material? Are they like IKEA flat pack that assembly is required instead of just buying the uh, how it was in the past? They were already wives. We just had to marry them. Have I got it wrong? Have I got it right? Have your eyes been opened a little bit more, my brothers? If so, let me know in the comments down below. If you're not already subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Don't forget to hit the bell notification because you don't want to miss out on future content that I'm putting out there. And also, go back and look at the back catalogue. Every piece of this jigsaw is in those, uh, in those videos. A little bite-sized piece of the jigsaw so you can start see the whole of the picture. I've seen it mentioned many times, uh, new subscribers have come on and go, this channel's so underrated. Well, thanks for that. That's great. I, not that I like to be thought of as underrated, but it's not, I know what you're saying and that, you know, it's great. And you subscribers out there, you OGs, you first 21 that join this, this channel, you guys who are, well, we're in the 400s now, uh, you guys who are, who, who, who have shown your support of me, you are the solid brothers you're my brothers it's that simple you are my brothers and you are good solid nice salt of the earth the proper blokes that you'd want standing next to you when anything went bad because they'd have your back well i hope i've got your back by giving you this information anyway i'm going for a cup of tea because i think i've earned one i'll talk to you brothers later but before I do, remember, take care of yourself, because if you don't, who the hell will? I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.